notified the indigenous people of Biafra, Aiko, Namdekano, on Wednesday, June 19, 2024, indicated his interest to explore out of court settlement in the alleged terrorism charge preferred against him by the federal government. Kano's lead counsel, Aloy Ejimako, told Justice Binta Nyako of the Federal High Court Abuja upon resumed trial in the matter. Ejimako told the court that he had discussed the matter with a lawyer to the Attorney General of the Federation, AGF, Chief Adeboiga Awomolo's son, on the last adjourned date. But Awomolo said, though Ejimako had a discussion with him on the issue, the senior lawyer said he bluntly told him to approach the AGF, who had the power to initiate the idea. According to him, I have not been instructed or authorized to do so. Earlier when the matter was called, Awomolo informed the court that the matter was scheduled for trial. He said he was ready to proceed as their witnesses were in court. Ejimako then informed the court that he had two applications before the court. The lawyer said one was Form 49 application seeking the committal of the Director General of Department of State Service DSS to prison for alleged disobedience to court orders. He said the second was the application challenging the jurisdiction of the court. He said the DSS had not fully complied with the orders of the court as their visit to Kano was still being booked. Ijimako, however, said in their last visit to Kano on Monday, June 17, there was considerable improvement in the way they were treated by the security agency. He said he and his colleagues were granted access into the facility and they were given papers to take notes. The lawyer, however, insisted that the service has not obeyed the order directing them to give Kanu a safe room to meet with his lawyers. Ijimako expressed concern that the room the DSS gave them to meet with their client is booked. He therefore urged the court to invoke Section 17 of the Federal High Court Act, which he said provides for reconciliation and facilitation of amicable settlement in criminal or civil matters. He claimed that he had, in the last adjourned it, discussed the proposition with Awomolo and that the senior lawyer told him the proper time for such issue had not come. Responding, Awomolo said he did not have the instruction of his client to embark on any negotiation with the defendant over the charge. He said as a legal practitioner, he was only brief to prosecute the matter. I told him to go to the AGF who has the power, he said. However, trial judge who observed that the court had no problem with exploring out-of-court settlements if the parties decided to do so, urged Kanu to approach the AGF, who is a proper person to negotiate with. On the issue of Form 49 application filed by Kanu, Justice Nyako held that application was not before her. She said the matter would be looked into when the application is brought before her. The judge, however, ordered the DSS to provide an unbugged space for Kanu to meet with his lawyers each time they were at the facility to prepare for his defense. She said the unbugged space could be a garden within the DSS premises where Kanu and his lawyers could discuss without any interference by the DSS operatives. Meanwhile, Justice Nyako also dismissed a fresh application by Kanu challenging the jurisdiction of the courts to entertain counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 and 15 for being unconstitutional. The judge held that she cannot overrule herself on issues she had already resolved, adding that the only option left for the applicants was to proceed on appeal. Justice Nyako equally ordered the prosecution to file and serve its proof of evidence on the, defend on the defendant while the defendant should file his defense pending the next adjourned dates. She ordered that the defendant should agree with the prosecution where there are no issues and state his objection where necessary. Carlo, through his lawyer, had in the fresh application urged the court to quash the charges for being unconstitutional. He argued that in five counts, the prosecution failed to indicate the exact location where Kano's alleged offensive broadcast occurred. He had argued that the court lacked jurisdiction since the prosecution failed to show in the charge whether the alleged offensive broadcast was a punishable offense in Kenya or Britain, the two places where Kano 
had been outside Nigeria before his rearrest. The judge adjourned the matter until September 24 for further hearing. The IPOB leader had been in the custody of the DSS since 2021 when he was rearrested and brought back to continue his trial on alleged treasonable felony and terrorism charge. The court had on May 20 refused to release him from custody on grounds that the DSS is proper place for the defendant to be while the trial lasts. The court, which declined Kanu's application, ordered the DSS to grant Kanu unfettered access to his lawyers and fixed Wednesday for trial. From Lagos, this is Tina Timothy, News Express Nigeria Television.